Good day. Thank you for joining our webinar where we will walk you through the steps required to build an effective virtual office. Hugh Valentine, our esteemed presenter, will share real life tips and tricks that we use across our organization and actually shared with many of our clients that we've helped these solutions for. Questions can be submitted by the way of the Q&A icon. Um, I will keep these over and share with Hugh at the very end. Hugh, it's over to you. Thank you, Lisa, and hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining. So this is a series of webinars that we've been doing. Uh, our current situation as an organization is that we're completely using Microsoft 365 and we're working 100% remotely. So using the technologies that we're showing you today, we've been able to achieve a, an effective workforce by using the solutions in Microsoft 365. Some of the topics that we'd like to cover today. So the agenda, we're first of all gonna go over the Microsoft 365 licensing. So that anybody that has joined us today that don't currently use Microsoft 365, they will be able to get a good understanding of what the ways up forward are to use these platforms and features. There's also been a recent update in the naming of the Microsoft 365 licensing. So it'll be good for some of you guys to get an overview of what those changes are and what they mean. We're going to cover off day to day working. So how can you use the technologies available to be an effective department and work day to day? We'll cover off how we can use communication and social and use tools such as SharePoint and Microsoft Teams to engage with your workforce remotely. We're going to go over some additional tools like Planner and To Do and explain how you can work effectively from home and how you can manage your team and departments. We're going to go through some tips of working with clients and suppliers. So obviously it might be a challenge in the current environment for the way you're working. We're then going to cover off how we can make a secure and controlled environment. So lots of organizations have been scrambling to get onto this technology and that can be at the sacrifice of the security of the platform. So we feel it's very important to go through some of the tools available in enterprise mobility and security. We're then going to cover off at the end uh, some upcoming events and workshops that we can offer. And finally, we'll do the questions and answers at the very end as well. So as you have questions through today, just ask them using the Q&A as Lisa mentioned, and at the very end, we will basically go through those and answer any questions you have. So the first piece of the agenda is the licenses. So the first thing to, to be of note is if you don't currently have Office 365, Microsoft have very kindly made the Microsoft 365 E1 available for free for six months for up to 25 users. So if you're currently in the position that you don't use Office 365 and you'd like to get started with what I'm going to show you today, that's a really fantastic way where you can get this completely free and get all of the tools that I'm going to go through with you. Now, in terms of the licenses, Microsoft have recently rebranded and renamed some of these licenses, which can be quite confusing at the moment, but hopefully over time that this will make things easier. So there's the Microsoft 365 Business Basic, which costs £3.80 per user per month. That's been renamed. It was formerly called Business Essentials. And this will provide us all of the, the productivity tools that I'm going to show you. So SharePoint, Teams, OneDrive, everything around that. But it doesn't include the ability to install Microsoft Office. And it doesn't include some of the security tools that I'm going to cover off at the end. So it's missing some of the, the key security benefits. We then have the Microsoft 365 Business Standard, which was formerly Office 365 Business Premium. So that's been renamed again. Uh, this includes everything that Business Basic does, but it also then allows users to install Office on their devices. It again doesn't have the security components. So then that leads us to the Microsoft 365 Business Premium license. Now for 99% of organizations that are under 300 users, this is a fantastic option. This includes pretty much every product that Microsoft um, can offer that would be useful for you. And it basically gives you the ability to install Office. It provides the security tools that I'm gonna cover off at the end. And it gives you a lot of retention and compliance benefits as well. The e-licenses, so as I mentioned, there's an E1 license that's available to, um, to all users at the moment you can get 25 of those for free and there's also the enterprise plans here 
So any organizations that have joined us today where you have 300 users or more, you tend to fall into these enterprise plans here where um, you get basically a few more additional functionalities, especially in the E5 license. But it's a tipping point that when your business is over 300 users, you end up falling into this class of licenses. There is, of course, academic and charity licenses, which are very similar to these plans. So if anybody has joined us today who are on the academic or, um, or, or a non-profit, we can cover those off and we, we can help you with that. Just get in touch. Now, the first topic that we want to cover is in the new environment with everybody working from home. How are we able to effectively work from home and what tools are available to us to help us do that? So we did a previous workshop, which is available for download, which was building effective departments using Microsoft Teams. So we covered Microsoft Teams in a lot more detail and we come up with some tips and tricks. Today we're going to cover it off for people that didn't attend. We're going to go through a very brief overview of Microsoft Teams and how that can help your day to day working. So I've just moved over into the Microsoft Teams world. Now, as an overview for people that haven't seen Teams before, the first piece of this is we have the chat functionality. So this basically replaces um, all of the functionality of Skype for Business. So if your organization has used Skype for Business, the chat basically provides the same functionality. There's some new improvements. Uh, we can do sort of urgent chats. We can do video calls and screen sharing and all that kind of stuff. We then have um, Teams. So we have the ability then to create Microsoft Teams. So on the left hand side, I have a, a finance team that I'm a member of and all the other teams that I'm a member of appear in here as well. So teams work really well for organizations in three main areas. The first one is we can create a team for departments. So as I said in the previous workshop, we went into a lot of detail about building an effective department using Microsoft Teams. The second one is we can create a project team as well. So if you're working on projects that are across different departments, then it's a really fantastic tool to use Microsoft Teams for bringing in people from different departments. Now from a day to day working, uh, the way that we use Microsoft Teams is we basically have a what we call a daily catch up and we have a weekly catch up. So I've prepared a response here of a weekly detailed catch up. Now, this basically has been tagged with at demo finance. So that means that everybody in the finance team has been tagged in this post and we've then set up a brief agenda of what we'd like to cover. So the weekly catch up, we consider that's a detailed catch up. It might take an hour with the team. And we also do a daily catch up, which I could start one down here. I can tag at team and I could say daily catch up. Start in 15 minutes and we do a daily catch up every day and we do one at the start of the day and we do one in the afternoon. So effectively, this is like when you get into the office on a Monday morning, you sit down with the team and it's just a general catch up. So how are you? Did you have a good evening? Uh, what are your tasks for today? Is there any issues that I can help you with? So we use the daily catch ups as a way of engaging with the teams and the departments that they're working. We then plan in a weekly catch up, which is more detailed. We set an hour aside where we can work and we set a, a set an agenda for going through that topic and covering everything off. So we can see we've got social catch up, COVID-19 planning, and then various financial tasks that we're gonna cover off. We would record that meeting. So the great thing with Teams is we have the ability to record the meeting. So as today, you'll find we'll send you the recording of this session. But the recording basically is a way for people that weren't able to attend the meeting. They can just click back in here and they can see what happened and what went on. There's no need to repeat yourself and, and go through the same topics. We've then got kind of the agreed actions. So within Teams, I can tag an individual by typing at Steve as an example and I can then post the actions here. So hopefully that gives you quite a quick format of the way that we work effectively remotely. We have the daily quick catch ups and then we have a more detailed weekly catch up. And of course we do ad hoc project catch ups and stuff that we're doing as well. We're then using the recording functionality so we can play those meeting back. And we're then using the tagging um, functionality to tag people to, to, so that everyone's aware of what the tasks were to follow that. The next part of Teams, which we find really helps with remote working, is we have the files section at the top here. 
So it's possible to drag all of your files from your company structure into Microsoft Teams. And you can see here that I have a, a folder structure that I'm able to browse and click into various files. I can also choose the sync option. So the syncing option provides me a, another product called OneDrive. So OneDrive basically, if I drag this over, you can see here I've got a list of all my synced folders and I have one here called marketing. So all it does is it takes the files that I'm looking at. So currently the demo finance ones, and I'm then able to see all of the files and structures that I've got. Um, so anybody that's moving from a traditional file server, you'll find that this is very familiar technology and makes it very easy for people to adopt. They don't have to learn a completely new web only infrastructure. You'll notice I've got a cloud icon. So the cloud icon indicates that I've got this uh, available in the cloud only, so I don't have to have an internet connection to see that. I then also have a dark green tick and a light green tick. So th th this functionality is perhaps more useful when we're traveling and we're able to work in different offices, but the dark green tick means that it's I've basically right clicked and I've selected always keep on this device. So I can take that away. I can work on it when I'm on the train or perhaps even if you're working at home and you have a poor internet connection, you might want to use the keep on this device because it'll download that data onto your PC and make it quicker to access. So we use Teams to basically work day to day. We use the conversations to replace the internal emails and we then use the file section to uh, replace our file server and work a more effective way there. We're going to cover off a lot more tools as we go through our presentation. So the we'll cover off in a working effectively from home section and we'll talk through some additional tools that can make that easier. The next piece really is how can we promote communication and social? So obviously it's critical in this current time that we're communicating both internally and externally. And what are the various tools that are available to us that will help us do that? So jumping back into Microsoft Teams, we have a very new powerful functionality that's very popular at the moment, which is called Business Voice. So Business Voice basically is a, an additional add-on for Microsoft Teams, and it enables you to have an external phone number and to replace a traditional phone system. So we've seen a lot of clients who've been struggling to use their phone system in the current environment because it's on-premise. This basically takes that away. You can see here I've got a direct dial number, which if anybody calls me on that, I'll be able to receive that call, and I can obviously then dial a call back from there. So I'm able to send and receive calls. I'm also able to set up different rules in the background. So if I want to set up different types of um, call forwarding, I'm able to, if I'm not gonna be available, I'm able to forward my calls to my mobile in the interim period. So the voice functionality is very, very powerful. And we're doing a lot of speedy onboarding for clients that might be looking to get a new phone system in place. So if you are, get in touch with us. The next piece really about communications is how can we handle announcements? So another product that we're covering off today is a product called SharePoint Online. So SharePoint Online basically it allows us to build an intranet platform for your organization. So this page that I have open at the moment is laid out that if I was a brand new employee in the organization on day one, it's very simple for me to find information. So I can see policies, I can see there's a button for COVID-19 planning, which we'll come back to, and I can see different applications that we, we've built and we can have access to. Across the top, I've got quite a nice navigation, which helps the user basically find what they're trying to look for. So they can go, I'm looking for compliance information. And we always recommend that companies think of SharePoint as a public sharing platform. So what we have here is the compliance department and the compliance department will know that this page is accessible to everybody in the company. So I can see things like frequently asked questions. I can see who the compliance team members are. And as I scroll through this page, I can see documents and videos. So the whole concept of this is, compliance would update their SharePoint page, they then know that everyone can have access to that and it will reduce the administration requests of saying where do I find this document or who do I ask this question. SharePoint's a very good platform to basically remove the kind of questions and, and administration emails that people send out and in the current climate it might be a fantastic place that people can start to put their information and make it easy to find. Back to the home page of SharePoint, as we scroll further down, 
we can also use this for things like company news. So obviously a big key piece of what's going on at the moment. If you get a new starters joining your organization, uh, if you've got announcements about COVID-19 or general other policy announcements, SharePoint provides us a fantastic platform to be able to provide up on ongoing news and announcements. One of the cool things that we can actually do with that as well is if I flick back to Teams, we can actually post a news story from SharePoint automatically into Microsoft Teams. So you'll notice here, I've got a COVID-19 update. So this story here has automatically been posted from SharePoint into Microsoft Teams. And that then gives the, the people who've seen the post the ability then to provide updates and see what's going on. And that news isn't just contained within the finance channel, but it can be dropped in across multiple different teams. So as I go into the, the finance project, we can see that this has also been announced here. So the SharePoint and the Teams integration is a fantastic way of being able to share and have a central news hub, which would be SharePoint, where you post all of your news. And that can then automatically then post it into Microsoft Teams so you can start to get the engagement and the social feedback from people by using the comments and the replies. So we find that's a very, very good tool to enable people to start posting announcements. The news can be presented in lots of different ways as well. So if I jump up into this hub here, you can see this is kind of a news hub where we've got lots of different articles with different categories. And I've got another example here where the, the news is laid out in different ways. So we can have the news show um, in lots of interesting ways and you can basically make this the first page that people would come to when they're trying to find a, a news article or an announcement. So continuing with the communication and social, there's some other components that we would recommend that would help your organization with, with communications. So we would recommend that every company looks to create a Microsoft team that's dedicated to the whole company and can be used for announcements like COVID-19, but it could also be used as a social engagement here. So something that we've been doing, and I've seen a lot of other companies are doing this as well, is we're doing a happy hour, which company-wide for us as we're a relatively small team, but lots of people are using happy hour to do a department catch-up. They might be doing a full company-wide catch-up. So th the intention of happy hour is at the end of the day, just try and have a bit of fun. So stop talking about work, try and replicate going to the pub, which a lot of us would do. And we, we found that have, we've had a lot of fun by setting up a company quiz. Uh, we've actually invited some of our suppliers and customers onto the company quiz. So we've been building the relationship up and having happy hour with not just internally, but dragging other people into it. We've done some online games as well. So some of the feedback I've had, we've done happy hour. The first 10 minutes is really great, but then we run out of things to talk to. So these quizzes and these online games are basically to keep the conversation going, keep it interesting and, and really pass the time ridiculously quick. So I would recommend go ahead and try and set up a happy hour if you're not doing that already and really promote this social engagement across your organization. The next thing that we can do, which can help with the social aspect is we have the ability in here to schedule a new live event. So a live event basically is exactly what we're doing today. A live event allows us to basically create one. I could do an internal announcement. So if your organization's got a lot of employees and you're looking to do an announcement on a new change that's happening in the organization, we can go to live events here and we can then choose an org wide live event. So this basically enables me to send out an org wide live event to everybody in the organization and they will then be able to participate in exactly what we're doing now. So it's a really good platform to do announcements. It's a good way to do a Q&A, which you guys can ask questions as we go through today. And also potentially moving forward, it's a good way of having a public one as well. So you could use a public one to do a webinar or an, a supplier announcement or customer announcement across with all of your clients in the organization. So that's kind of the communication and social aspects. So business voice for Microsoft Teams plays a very big part of this. SharePoint and building that intranet and that news hub can be a really fantastic way of making the news interactive and look really good. 
And then also we can then look at Microsoft Teams to do some of the social engagement, especially look at happy hour and maybe the live events if you're looking for a platform to do a really big announcement. The next piece that we wanted to cover is what tools are available within Microsoft 365 that can help you work effectively from home. So our previous webinar covered very much on Microsoft Teams and the tools that are available to you within there. But if we jump back into SharePoint here, so SharePoint is a really, really interactive and visual tool. So whereas Teams is good at being able to get input and being able to collaborate, SharePoint's a really good way of presenting information. So we've had a lot of our clients request, we need to create a hub where we can start to share news around COVID-19. So what I've developed here is a very simple SharePoint page which basically is a COVID-19 internal guidance page. Now this didn't take me long at all to create. This is something you can create in SharePoint very, very quickly. And what we've done on the left-hand side is we've put the statement, which is basically an address that we sent to our clients, but also for our, our internal employees to be aware of what's going on. Down the right-hand side, I've put some useful links. So we've got kind of like a live map of, of what's going on. We have a, a, the government official web page. We have our cheat sheet. So that's something we covered off in a lot more detail in our previous webinar. But the cheat sheet basically is something we'd recommend that you build for Microsoft Teams that just helps users get their head around how they should be using Teams. So put things like daily catch up and replace internal emails. We've also got kind of a very simple Microsoft form. So we've got people that are working now from home. We've got a lot of requests from people about, can I get X, Y, Z? So we've built a very quick Microsoft form, which I'll show you in a sec, that can then be used to basically request the equipment. So what equipment do you require? Describe why you require this equipment, and that'll then send an email to the relevant people for approval and then get that equipment over to people. So Microsoft Forms is a very quick way of building an interactive form that we can use then to gather information. So back on my COVID-19 and Turbo guidance page, as I scroll through this page, I'm able to, using the news hub that I showed you earlier on, I'm able actually to just bring a related news section in here. So rather than presenting on this page to the employee every single news article that's ever come in, I've actually just done a search to say, bring me back only relevant news articles to COVID-19. So on this concept of having the news hub, we're able then to build relevant pages and bring that information so it's easy for people to find. And finally, I've got kind of COVID-19 resources. So this is a very simple document library, but it's basically bringing all of the information together on one page. So I can see here the statement, the loan working policy and the working from home policy. So again, these will exist in different areas in SharePoint in the policies library, but we've brought them through into one central place just to make it easy for employees to, to find what they're looking for. Finally, on this, we also have the ability for people to comment on there as well. So if someone feels that this, this doesn't cover information that they needed or they weren't able to find what they were looking for, we've actually got some stats on there. People can like it, they can comment on this page and they can ask questions and tag people. So if the page isn't up to standard of what people would like to do, then we can use this platform to basically update that and make it really simple and get some feedback on this information. We would also recommend using SharePoint for some other pieces around here. So we've got kind of a customer's portal. So this is a very simple area in which we've got a customer's section. There's various news and links available. And then as we scroll through this page, we've actually just created a customer page for each of the customers that exist. And I can then go into the Acme customer and they also have news and documents. And something we'll cover off, we'll come back to this in the supplier and the customer engagement is how we could share this with people moving forward. We also recommend uh, looking at building a training portal. So again, SharePoint's a really interactive tool. We're able to quickly bring together resources. So if people are starting to use Microsoft Teams and SharePoint and other pieces, uh, they're definitely going to want help and guidance on where they can find this information and how they can use it easily. So the training portal just basically brings up links to different applications and things that we'd recommend that they can use. 
it's got upcoming training courses so we might be hosting some remote sessions to get people on board we've again got documents and we then have a product called Microsoft Stream, which would be available to you guys. And Microsoft Stream basically allows us to create videos and channels. So I've brought these through onto my home page and I've got some videos on on first aid and social media management. But the idea of Stream is you can build a, basically a YouTube for your organization. So you can think of uh, stream as if you're trying to build up materials and videos and guidance for people so they can get started and then they're not trying to read through documents we're able to come into the stream platform and upload videos and create channels that enable them people to search for this there's some really cool functions in here as well so you're able then to search back and do a transcript of the conversation as well so if you were to upload a video here with lots of talking in there, down the right hand side, you're able to see the transcript. And that means that users can do a search across Office 365 and they'll then be able to bring back any reference to that file and find what they're looking for. So a combination of stream to upload your videos, but then presenting that in a nice uh, interactive format using SharePoint. Uh, just as an example as well, uh, we've got an example here of a manual handling training page. So th this kind of just shows people how visual and interactive we can make content in SharePoint instead of it just being a Word document. So here we have what, what manual handling is about and all the information down the left hand side. But on the right hand side, we've still got a downloadable copy, so we can still make this a Word document. But we've then also got an embedded video. So people are probably going to watch this video, then read all this text. And we can even then use in forms, we can then embed a form onto the page and we can check whether they've read this, this training document properly. And you can see here that I failed this because I got two out of three wrong. So very interactive way of presenting information. Teams is a good way of collaborating, but SharePoint's a really fantastic tool of presenting that information and making it easy for people to digest. The next product that we want to cover off is a product called Planner and Microsoft To Do. So obviously a lot of organizations have now got people working from home. They're not able to work in the same manner that they would before. So they're facing challenges with how do they assign tasks? How do they see where people are up to with projects? So Planner, basically you can access this from office.com and select the Planner tab here. Or if you want and you're using Microsoft Teams already, you're able to just quickly come into Microsoft Teams just here and you're then able to create the add tab at the top and you're able to create a planner. So I've got one here called planner and that will set up a new plan in your environment. Now planner is if I go into finance planner here. Planner basically is all about creating different buckets. So in my finance one, I've created stuff in not, not started. I've got month end tasks and I've got some internal finance tasks. And the idea of this platform is that I can move this from one section to another as it progresses. And you can kind of then see an overall picture of where the tasks up to and what's going on. If I create a new task in here, so we could call one, it's called SharePoint deployment. I could set a due date of that for the end of the month and I can then assign that to everyone in the team. So I'll give this one to Steve. Once I've created the task, I'm able to jump into it and I can create a checklist. So if the SharePoint deployment is the intranet, it's the home page, it's an MS form, we can then start to flesh this out and we can even show that on the card, which means it will show up visually on this page here. There's lots of things in, in this planner as well, so we can have it basically move it to a different bucket. We can indicate whether it's been started or whether it's finished. And we can even upgrade the priority uh, to important, urgent or whatever you'd like in there. And you can even provide comments in there. So if I was to finish this task here and hand it over to Steve, I could put a comment in here to say Steve over to you and fire that off. And Steve now will get that message. So Planner is a really, really good way of basically trying to, if you're working on projects at the moment and you're struggling on, on communications and managing tasks, think of Planner as a way to easily do that. Another product tool that exists within the platform is a product called Microsoft To Do. So the idea of Microsoft To Do 
is you can it's basically your own to do management list so within here you're able to create different lists of what you're working on so i've got a few like internal lists i'm able to flag emails so within outlook you could flag an email and say i want to work on this later or you can just create ad hoc lists in here for what you're working on so i've got a finance planning list this also integrates with uh my with planner so if i click on assign to you you'll see in here i've got a task from my team's rollout and i'm able to to, to basically see that task and see it it's, it's available in planner just there as well the idea of planner though is you can set up as many lists as you like you can integrate it with your email and planner but the intention is that when you're working day to day if you've got lots of things that you're working on and you want a centralized to-do list you're able to come into here and right click on this and choose add to my day so I can add these tasks to my day, which means that I'm going to start working on them. And what happened on my day plan is I've got a list of all the, the stuff that I'm planning on working on in the day and I can mark that off. So it's just a very effective way of managing across your emails, across planner. This tool brings them all together and makes it very simple to to manage your tasks and, and get working on those. So planner is good if you've got a, a team of people that you're looking to, to basically plan out a project or your various department functions and then to do can bring all of those together for the user so they're able to manage how they're going to work on a day-to-day -day basis so think of the, the these to basically start helping man manage your day-to-day -day working as we move forward so that covers off the working effectively from home so to recap SharePoint is a fantastic tool for sharing information like the COVID-19 page, the policies, and we can build various apps within there. Stream is a good place to upload your videos and build some training materials and a training portal. And then Planner and To Do can be a really effective task management area. The next thing that we wanted to cover off is how can we work with clients and suppliers in the current environment? So what tools are available to us that can help us with this? So the first one is Microsoft Teams again. So we've got two options in Microsoft Teams. The first one we have is within any team that we've created in Microsoft Teams, once it's been configured and sat in the background, I can actually invite anybody in the world to this. So I could invite my Outlook account and I can then put them into this as a guest so when I select the add as a guest I can then add that person in and that person for completely free will be able to join the Microsoft team and they'll be able to participate in the conversations they'll be able to participate in all the files and the wiki so they'll basically be able to use absolutely everything that's available in Microsoft Teams there's no limitation to what they can do so if you're working with a supplier at the moment perhaps you're trying to work on a new marketing project you could invite your marketing company into this platform just as we do and you could all work from the same space and communicate and collaborate and spin up ad hoc meetings the second thing that would be very useful is we also have the ability to spin up a meeting from within Outlook. So if you're trying to engage and do a sales pitch with a client or you're looking to just get in touch, we're able to come into a meeting here and hit new teams meeting. And what that does is it sets up a meeting in Outlook that you're then able to invite people into. So if you've got clients or suppliers that you need to start screen sharing with, video chat, all of that kind of stuff that we've been doing today, then go into your Outlook calendar and you can then start to invite people onto this. I've got this additional add-on. So I've got the business voice license, which means I'm able to let people to dial in to the meeting. But you can also purchase this as an individual license. So if you wanted to just allow the ability for users to dial in, there's an audio conferencing license available, which costs three pound per user per month. So that kind of gets us um, working so we can get external suppliers and clients working in the same way you guys would. They can come into your world and work in exactly the same way. The second option that we have is within SharePoint again, and I touched on this earlier, but if I go into the customers section just here, um, within SharePoint, we've got lots of abilities to share sites as well. So we're not limited to just being able to share um, 
documents. We can actually come into here. I can come into a customer site. So I've built a very basic extranet for our client Acme. I've put some news on there. I've put some quick links and then a bit further down, I'm then sharing documents with with the client. So what I'm able to do with SharePoint is I'm actually able to just share this site with anybody that I want. So I can come into a site in here. I can then choose the cog in the top right hand corner when it decides to show up. And I can choose site permissions and share site. And I'm then able to add anybody again in the world onto this and they'll be able to use everything that I'm doing in SharePoint. So they'd get the same look and feel. They'd be able to view the news, the links and stuff. So this is a very simple tool that might provide you guys an extra net that people can log into. One of the downsides is with sharing with this is they do have to have a Microsoft account. So that could be an Office 365 account or it could be a um, Microsoft a, a Microsoft account, one of the consumer type live accounts that you can create. We can also just share individually. We can share documents and folders as well. So perhaps if you're sharing was a bit, your requirements were a bit simpler. If you wanted to share a folder with a client, we can come into the SharePoint area and we can hit the share. And we're then able to choose the specific people option and we can give them read only or edit access. But this basically again enables me to share this externally with somebody. So I'm only sharing a folder or file with them. You can see it's warning me that Hugh Valentine at Gmail is outside of my organization, but it's very handy. So we use it a lot when we need to share folders and files with people. We just share them a folder and they can come into here. Or if we want to share a proposal, we're able to just share an individual file using the same functionality as well. The other option that people have, so some organizations have really struggled with um, getting to grips with some of their employees where they're not able to share information and they found that the requiring a Microsoft account is quite difficult and requires a lot of steps for people to get on. So whereas it's a good experience once they get into this platform and they can view the documents, the registration can be quite difficult. So some of our clients have said we need a really quick way to share information. So we're working, for example, with a care home. They want to share a portal with the um, with the people in their care and the, the not everybody has an email and it can be very difficult for people to log in. So there is another solution. Um, there's a, a new product called Power Apps Portals, which starts at £150 a month. But what this basically allows us to do is it allows us to create a very interactive homepage. So this is a simple example of a, a Power Apps Portal where we've got links to various systems. We've got the ability to raise an issue. So within here, we've got a link to a, a simple form. We can book an appointment. So we're able to build an online extranet that removes all of the login requirements. So for anybody that's joining today that's looking for a very simple way to create an, a portal and start to share news and get forms on there, then the Power Apps portals is a really good way of doing that. And it can be um, they can sign in with Facebook, they can sign in with their own username and passwords, or we can even make it completely anonymous so they don't have to sign in. So we're finding a lot of people are finding this is a very good solution to build a quick extranet that removes all of the complications of having to log in and makes it easier for people to join. So that's kind of working with clients and suppliers. So to recap, Microsoft Teams has two options. It has the ability to invite your suppliers and clients as guests, so they're able to come in and use the full functionality. We're able to invite people to external meetings so they can join via the web. We then jumped into SharePoint, which allows us to build an extranet or just simply share a folder or file. And then finally, we just covered off the Power Apps portals, which lets you build a true extranet that makes it very simple for people to log in. The next piece really is a lot of people are moving and scrambling very, very quickly to get onto these platforms. So they're trying to get onto Microsoft Teams as quickly as they can. People are getting on to using Office 365 a lot more. Um, that has been a, a sacrifice 
sacrifice of potentially some of the security that if more companies had a lot of time to get right in the first place, they would have put governance and security in place prior to doing this launch. So I wanted to cover off some of the key tools that are available to people. One of those tools is Azure AD. We'll also cover off something called Intune and we'll cover something called Azure Information Protection. One thing to note, um, obviously there's been a lot of press recently about Microsoft Teams and Zoom. So Zoom has been in the headlines a lot recently as that they've done a lot of things around security that have made it very dangerous. So they've been sharing people's information. They haven't been encrypting data properly. So on the back of today, we're going to launch a Microsoft Teams versus Zoom blog post, which covers some of the security concerns and why Microsoft 365 is a more secure platform to, to trust with your data. Now, Azure AD, is included in the Microsoft 365 Business Premium License. And this platform basically provides us three key things that we'd be interested in. So the first product that we're interested in within here is a product called Conditional Access. So condition, Conditional Access basically lets us define the rules on how people can access the platform moving forward. So as you'll all be aware, Office 365, you can log into any PC and you can then basically do all of the services within the Office 365. So that's fantastic. It makes it a good user experience for people logging in, but it potentially has a big security hole because if people are logging in to your Office 365 environment from their home PCs, do they have an antivirus in place? Have they got any malware? These are the kind of things that you don't really know. So what conditional access lets us do is it lets us build any rule on how you can access anything in Office 365. So some examples of the ones that we commonly deploy. We've got one here called Trusted Locations MFA. So what this one does is it basically enforces multi-factor authentication, which means that every time a user signs in, they have to confirm their identity by a text code or an app on their phone but it actually then excludes different types of locations. So we can actually then exclude the trusted location to say um, if you're in the office, which a lot of people won't be at the moment, but if we're in the office, you don't actually have to MFA. So we can remove that requirement. We can also set this to be trusted devices as well. So if you wanted to say, right, we've issued this company laptop to someone, we trust the device so they don't have to MFA on there. So MFA would then only hit when they're on an unknown device potentially. So the trusted locations is a very good conditional access policy that locks down your environment and enforces two-factor authentication on devices. The next one we have here is block non-compliant devices. So this basically says if it's not a work issue device, block access to Office 365. So very, very powerful. We don't really want users logging in on their home PCs. Uh, so this will block their ability to do that. The next one is restrict non-compliant devices. So this can actually still give them access on their home PC, but it puts everything into a limited mode. So they're not able to change documents, that they're not able to download information. They're only able to use the web browser modes. And then the final one is restrict risky countries. So we see lots of attacks from different countries like China are constantly trying Office 365 accounts. So the restrict risky countries basically means that it'll stop if a successful login attempt was to come from those countries, it will stop that user from being able to log in. So it's just another security method. The next thing that we have available within Microsoft 365 security is the ability for single sign-on to different applications. So your organization might use lots of different cloud applications. So there's some examples here of Concur, Box, DocuSign. That there's a potentially around, uh, there's a number somewhere, there's about 3,000, 4,000 different cloud applications. What we're able to do with um, Azure AD Premium is we can overwrite the logins for Concur. So instead of a user having a username and password for Office 365, a username and password for Concur, and a username and password for DocuSign, that means if they leave, the IT team has to go remove them from three separate areas. So it's a bit of an administration nightmare. 
With this platform, we can actually say overwrite the login for Box with Office 365's login. So they only have one username and password that they log into. They don't have two usernames and passwords anymore. They effectively, the way that kind of works is when you come into a login page, you get a new button that says connect with Azure AD, and that then takes them to the Office 365 login page instead of the, the, the traditional one. So this means from an IT perspective, people don't have lots of usernames and passwords that might be forgotten to disable them. And it also means that from a user perspective, they only have to sign into one platform, 365, and that gives them access to all their other applications moving forward. These can also then be applied to conditional access. So we can then have those same policies that I've just been through apply into box. So they have to have a two factor authentication or they're not able to log in from their home PC. So this is a very, very powerful tool that will vastly improve the security of not just 365, but all of the other cloud applications that you use as well. Um, as a minimum, if you don't want to enable conditional access and single sign on, if you're not using multi-factor authentication, that's something you can switch on for free. And I would recommend that that gets switched on as a priority because it stops 99.9% .9 of attacks and you're very vulnerable to breaches such as phishing attacks and, and malware if you do not have MFA turned on. So I would really advise, although it's inconvenient, that you look to try and find a way to switch that on. And if, if it is going to be a big overhead, conditional access and the rules around that can really limit how much of an overhead that can be. The next tool that we want to talk about is a product called Intune. So Intune basically is a device management platform. It allows us to manage any type of device. Um, I won't go through it in a huge amount of detail, but what we have here, the first one is device enrollment. So enrollment basically is good if you've got devices that you issue to people, like a, a phone that you might give to someone or a Windows device. One of the cool, really cool things we have with Windows enrollment is we have the ability to um, do autopilot. So autopilot basically lets you ship a device directly to a user. You can buy it from Dell or whoever you buy your laptops from. They can then sign into that device with their work account and autopilot will go, I recognize this, go grab a cup of tea and for an hour that device will set itself up. So you don't have to go through and configure all the apps and the settings and the policies. Autopilot takes over and does that for you. So within Intune, we have the ability to do configuration. So this basically lets us put policies on devices. So I can say, right, we want this wallpaper set. We're going to deploy Chrome and these extensions. Pretty similar to group policies, not quite exactly the same, but we can do a lot of policies. And that's kind of where Autopilot will go and get this device profile from. So that's how it knows how to set those up. Client apps allows us to automatically deploy apps to, to devices. So we could deploy Office automatically. We could deploy an antivirus automatically. Uh, we could set up iPhone and Android apps on those devices as well. So very, very good to, for example, if you ship a laptop to someone and you want them to automatically get started, it means that you guys don't have to be involved with the setup and, and getting that configured. It'll be done for you. Finally, on Intune, there's a lot this product can do, but another really critical thing that should look, companies should look to enable if they have the capability is app protection policies. So what an app protection policy does is a very simple way of protecting the data on devices. So rather than having to manage the full phone and being able to overwrite the apps and put pins and stuff in, what an app protection policy does is when a user installs any of these apps like Outlook or SharePoint or Teams on their mobile phone, this basically says even though you're using a personal device, you're now using a work credentials on there. So you have to then adhere to these policies. So that app Teams as an example, uh, we can stop them from backing that data up into, into iTunes. We can encrypt the data. We can prevent them from even copying data from perhaps Teams to Dropbox. Uh, we can basically, we can really restrict what they can do, even down to when they open that app, they have to have a pin or face ID to be able to open it. So 
This means that if you've got lots of people using their own devices, their own phones, and they're accessing your company data, you'll really want these policies in place so you can then start to wipe that, protect those apps and encrypt them. And finally, we can do a selective wipe. So if that user then leaves the business, we can then do a wipe request, which goes ahead and wipes that app off their phone and doesn't touch the rest of the information. So that's kind of a snapshot of Intune. The final piece of the puzzle and the final app that's available within Azure, within Azure um, AD and Microsoft 365 is a product called Azure Information Protection. So what this platform does is basically within any type of Word document or Excel or even PDFs and emails, if I was to create this as a HR employee contract for myself, and then we've got a load of sensitive information in there, Azure Information Protection gives us a new label in the top right hand corner. And you can see I've got all these different types of labels. So you guys can configure your own labels. But what I can do is I can say this is for finance and HR only. And what it does is it puts a watermark in the background of the document to, to indicate that that's a finance and HR. But the main thing that this does is now this document is protected. So if I was to email this accidentally outside of the organization, I might send it someone externally by mistake, then they will not be able to open this document because what this label does is it always checks to see, is this person in the finance and HR group? If they're not, it kills the access to their that, that and their document. So we could do an internal only label or a public label. So it's very good as a way of classifying your data. So this highly confidential label might only be accessible by the directors of a company. I always use the example for Azure Information Protection as if you have two Phil Joneses in an organization, the director of the company, Phil Jones, and a factory floor worker, Phil Jones. One of those should be able to receive the director's salary information and the other shouldn't, and they potentially might share that across the organization. So if we were to create a label called directors only, if someone then in finance or HR was to say, right, we've sent this to the wrong person, the wrong Phil Jones on the factory floor, this service will check to see if that person is in the relevant group. If they're not in the group, it basically kills their access and doesn't allow them to do that. So Azure Information Protection is a very good way of protecting that data and stopping data leaks and that kind of thing. So that's kind of the secure and controlled environment. So there's a lot of tools that if you have Microsoft 365 that you might not be taking advantage of. And now you've done the scramble to teams and the remote way of working. It's probably time to take stock and say, well, are any of these tools things that we should be implementing? And as a minimum, MFA would be good to turn on. So that kind of concludes the, the webinar for today. So we have the ability for remote workshops. So if anything that we've been through today has been of interest to yourselves, we can host various remote workshops around Teams adoption, security, collaboration. We can tailor those agendas to, to basically help you get the most out of the Microsoft 365 platform. And down the right hand side is an example of what we'd cover in a Teams workshop. We're also doing this as a series of events. So we've done one called Building Effective Remote Departments using Microsoft Teams. So that's available on YouTube if you were missed it. The next one we're gonna focus on is basically removing paper and mobilizing a remote workforce. So this one we've seen with a lot of our clients, they've been struggling with, with people who are still working out in the field. They'd usually come back to the office with a piece of paper to say, here's what I've done, or here's a checklist of the work. Can you invoice the client? So there's a lot of tools available. SharePoint, Power Apps and Power Automate can actually help us get rid of paper altogether. So if you're one of those companies that's struggling at the moment where you don't have the central office to get that paper into or you just want to streamline your processes, on the 21st of April, we'll be going through that in a lot more detail and showing you how those tools can help. We're also going to launch the new blog post, which is basically around Zoom versus Teams. So that might be of interest to people. We're going to provide the links to these as well, but there's some useful links for people. So there's a good page from Microsoft, which is success with Teams. Um, there's some guidance in there, training tips and tricks. 
There's the Office 365 roadmap, which people have asked for in the past, which just basically shows you what's coming in the future. The Teams demo link here is a really good way of just showing people the concept of Teams. And if you've got people who are struggling with how to use it, this is an interactive web page that will show you how to do posts and it actually guides the user through that post. And we've actually published some tips on working home, working from home remotely as well, which has got a lot more useful information around it. And that kind of then leads to any Q&A. So over to Lisa, who hopefully has some questions for us to answer. And if anybody has any questions that they haven't posted, you can use the Q&A feature that's available as well. Thanks, Hugh. I've got a couple for you. Uh, David would like to know from you, which of the Microsoft 365 plans gives access to a virtual machine in the Azure cloud? So the, in the in the new license range, in the old licenses, Microsoft 365 Business will give you that. And in the new licenses, it's called Microsoft 365 Business Premium. Okay, and Sean wants to know from you whether your internal mails are now down to zero due to Teams. Well, we have a policy internally, so we, we don't send, to basically the approach we took to adopt teams completely was we put a blanket ban on internal emails being sent so we said for a two-week period we're going to go through the process of not sending a single internal email and then policing that so if someone did revert back um, then we did we would obviously police it after that two-week period there's not a chance anyone in the organization would revert back to internal emails but we do have some guidance to say we still use internal emails for formal communications so for example, a, a disciplinary or an appraisal, we still feel that emails is a more formal channel for doing that kind of communication. But apart from that, yes, zero emails for that kind of thing. Mm, well done. Um, videos in stream right up until last year weren't able to be shared externally. Has that changed at all? Unfortunately not. So the way we have to approach that at the moment is we take download that video and then upload it into OneDrive and we share a link that way, which is a bit of a pain. Hopefully they'll fix that soon. OK, and then just the last question, Hugh, we'll, we'll um, get to other questions later on. Um, if Anna has some of her licenses on business premium, can she still build conditional access rules for all of her users, even if there's ones that only have essential licenses? No. Uh, yeah, well, so you, you need the Microsoft 365 business or the Microsoft 365 business premium um, to be able to do conditional access posts and every user should be licensed to, to use that functionality, but there isn't actually anything checked to stop conditional access working across the whole organization at the moment. Perfect, thank you very much. There are some other questions for those of you who have asked some more technical questions and we can get back to you on those. Thank you, Hugh. Thank you, Lisa, and thank you everyone for joining. If you do have any questions, just get in touch. I'm more than happy to help you with those and we shall see you soon.